What makes a great coaster finale? For me, it's very simple. The ride has to go out with a bang. This can be in many forms. A great airtime moment, a tunnel, a helix, an inversion. It could literally be anything, but it has to stand out and wow you, even if it's not the best part of the ride. From the coasters I've ridden, I've picked out 21 that fit the bill. These are the best coaster finales. Let me start with a total wild card that I don't know if it belongs on the best finale list or the worst finale list. Full throttle. That drop over the top hat is a tremendous ejector moment, but it's killed by the final breaks. It's still a great finale, but it's also a ruined finale. I can't make heads or tails out of it, so I'm leaving it as a wild card honorable mention. I'll also give an honorable mention to Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Over Texas. This Aero Mine Train dates back to 1966 and is frankly a pretty boring ride. That is, until the finale. You roll through a well-themed house and then hit a sharp drop into a tunnel which flings you out of your seat in the back row. For a very mild ride, it's a finale that saves the ride. And now for the countdown. Number 21, El Loco at the Adventure Dome in Las Vegas. This SNS El Loco model stands 90 feet tall with a beyond vertical drop and features two inversions, all with just a lap bar. It packs a lot into its 1,300 feet of track, but perhaps its best element is its final element, that last dive loop that drops its riders back into the station. This will leave you hanging upside down by just your lap bar for a few seconds before leveling out and leaving riders with a great element to end on. Number 20, Gold Rusher at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Next year, Gold Rusher will turn 50 years old with the park, and much like the mine train at Over Texas I've already talked about, it's pretty tame, until the finale. Gold Rusher winds around the mountain that serves as a centerpiece of the park, but then it enters a wild helix where it just keeps picking up speed until it pops up to the station level and hits the final brakes. That helix finale will make you forget how dull the rest of the ride was. Number 19, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. In terms of wooden coaster layouts, Boulder Dash has one of the best. It winds around a mountain completely surrounded by trees, and it ends by swooping down the side of the mountain into a long run of airtime hills that leads back into the station. This is the only time during the ride that you come out from the woods and these airtime hills run right along the lake. I didn't get great airtime when I rode it, but apparently it can be pretty good when the ride is running well. Airtime or not, it's a great way to end the ride. Number 18, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This coaster has a little bit of everything, so why not a great finale? This is one of the more unique finales on this list because it doesn't feature a great standout element. It's all about the interaction with the guests waiting in line. The train enters the final tunnel, into a speed hill, with some of the best airtime on the ride right next to the station, and then a turn into a straightaway. This straightaway passes right by the ramp of people waiting to get on, and it's the perfect interaction point between the people on the train and the people in line. The last element is an overbank, which are a dime a dozen on Millennium Force, but it has one of the more unique and cool finales out there because of that interaction. Number 17, Raptor at Cedar Point. This B&M invert is all about intensity and whip. When the mid-course brakes are off, you're in for a wild second half. The corkscrews are great, but the best part of that second half is that downward double helix right before the final turn into the station. When Raptor is hauling, it feels like it's trying to rip your feet off. There's a lot of other inverts that end with the helix, including Silver Bullet, which is also strong, but it doesn't quite stack up to Raptor. Number 16, Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I know some of you may think that I'm talking about the pretzel loop, but I'm actually referring to that final turnaround over the plaza. This is actually my favorite part of the ride. It's so high off the ground and it passes right over the front of the park, so everyone coming into the park can see it. It's also pretty forceful, as it feels like the ride is pushing you away, but the restraint is keeping you in. This is the last real element of the ride, and you're still recovering from that pretzel loop when you go through it. Number 15, Mystery Mine at Dollywood. This ride is pretty funky. It has a lot of pointless elements at the beginning, but you're able to forgive that by the end. This Gerslauer Eurofighter goes up a vertical lift while enclosed with a projection at the top and then the train dives down vertically into a roll and a dive loop before sliding into the final brakes. That drop and those two inversions are wild and it's a perfect finale. Number 14, Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. 
This beloved Aero suspended coaster spent 25 years at the park and began with a ride through a village that was pretty mild. But then it climbed up that lift hill that had a straight drop down into the river. It would then bank left, which was an awesome element for a suspended coaster because the cars would swing so much. Once Big Bad Wolf was demolished, for Bolton would feature the same element, which is also a good finale, but it's not the same without the swinging cars of a suspended coaster. Number 13, The Beast at Kings Island. After a long ride through the woods, and I mean a long ride, some people may feel underwhelmed. There are some good sized drops in the first half, but also a lot of straight track. If you want a real thrilling part of the ride, just wait till the end. After the second lift, the train banks left and goes down a very gradual drop before exploding into a helix in a tunnel. And this helix seems to last forever with all that speed before the ride ends. Number 12, Thunderbird at Holiday World. This B&M wing coaster starts and ends with a bang. It's the only launch wing coaster and one of just two launch B&Ms, the other being the Incredible Hulk at Islands of Adventure. After the launch, the ride has a great layout, but the finale really stands out. The train cuts through a barn, a great near-miss element, and these are common on wing coasters. But this one is done so well, and it's the perfect ending to the ride. Number 11, Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. It's always great when an airtime-filled ride throws a bunch of airtime at you at the end of the ride, and you'll find a lot of that near the top of this list. Lightning Run is a small-scale coaster that tries to eject you from the start, and on the return trip to the station, it has three straight ejector hills before sliding into the final brakes. Usually by this time, I'm stapled, so it's not the wildest airtime from my experience, but if you can spare a little bit of room by the end, it's a great finale. Number 10, Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This CCI Woody has one of the great wooden coaster layouts ever, filled with airtime and an out of control feeling, but it caps off with something that you don't see too often, a completely unbanked helix that winds around right next to the first drop. This is probably the best moment of lateral force you'll find on a coaster, at least from what I've ridden. You'll be clinging to the side of the train the whole time before popping into the final brakes. This is a unique finale because it does something totally different from what the rest of the ride is all about, but it totally works and it adds to the masterpiece that is Ghost Rider. Number nine, Phoenix at Knobles. One word, two words, buzz bars. A ride with great airtime usually does not have buzz bars, which are those single position lap bars that don't come anywhere close to your lap. The first part of this ride is good, with big drops and some airtime, but that last run that returns the train to the station is one continuous run of five awesome airtime hills. Front or back, you'll come out of your seat on every single one. It's not the strongest airtime, but with the buzz bars, it's more than enough to make it a great finale. Number eight, Goliath and Titan at Six Flags Magic Mountain and over Texas. I'm not the biggest fan of this finale, but that's just because of my personal taste in coasters. It's a bone crushing helix. I don't know of any other coaster that has a helix as punishing as this. After the mid-course brake run, the train winds down back towards ground level and then pops up and then enters a helix that grinds you down to your core. It's not a tight, quick helix either. It's a long, huge, drawn out helix that will slowly make you lose your vision until it pulls out of it and turns into the final brake run. For fans of intensity and positive Gs, this one is definitely for you. Number seven, Lightning Rod at Dollywood. RMC did a masterful job with this terrain wooden coaster. From the launch lift hill up the mountain, to that amazing wave turn, to the twist and shout elements, and then the grand finale. This coaster starts by climbing up a hill, so it needs to return to the station by coming back down that hill. And it does so via the quad down. Four pops of ejector airtime as you bounce down the hill before making that final turn into the brake run. Other than the airtime, the best part is the fact that everyone in line can see the train coming over the hill and down every part of that quad down. Number six, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This one is all about the quarry wall. Iron Rattler likes to jump on top of it and dive off of it during the first part of the ride, but it's that last dive off the wall and then the tunnel through the wall that makes this a great finale. That straight dive off the wall is one of the great ejector moments of any coaster in the back row. And then the train races at full speed through the tunnel, straight into the final brakes. Iron Rattler is a short but extreme ride, and those last two elements are the perfect ending. Number five, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. What's the best way to end the coaster with the most airtime in the world? By cramming in as many hills as you can to end the ride. 
After emerging from the final lap through the structure, it makes its way back to the station with five quick pops of ejector airtime, right through the people waiting in the queue line. After getting endless airtime through the first 70 seconds of the ride, the last few seconds are a very fitting send-off. Number 4. Flight Deck at California's Great America B&M was still brand new to making coasters in 1993, but they made the most of the plot of land that they were given to work with at Great America. Flight Deck, then known as Top Gun, is a very short ride, but it's also very intense. The coaster is set right on a lake, so it ends with a corkscrew into a turn that goes right over the lake and back into the station. These are simple elements, but especially with that setting, it's one of the most iconic finales out there. Number 3. Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood There aren't too many coasters that end with the power of Phantom's Revenge. The first half is all about speed. The big first two drops, the second one diving into a ravine where it hits top speed, and then the second half is all about airtime. Every single hill ejects you violently, and as you turn into the station, it has one more ejector hill before hitting the final brakes. You can see from the POV how violent this airtime really is. Phantom's Revenge has a great well-rounded layout, and it saves the best for last. Number 2. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City Not only is this a great finale, it's also a historic one. Outlaw Run was the first RMC Topper Track wooden coaster when it opened in 2013, and it featured three inversions. This was unheard of for a wooden coaster. After a layout with an insane 162-foot, 81-degree drop, and an airtime-filled layout, Outlaw Run finishes its course with the unthinkable for a wooden coaster, a double barrel roll. This is a bizarre way to end the ride, and it was our first introduction into what RMC could do when building a coaster from the ground up, and it was quite the introduction. Number 1. Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point a ride that's now 31 years old holds the title for the best finale that I've experienced. It's the legendary run of airtime hills that made the ride famous. Well, the fact that it was the first coaster to have a 200 foot drop is what made it famous. But what keeps it famous is that amazing finale. The first part of the ride actually leaves a lot to be desired. A few big drops and a weird turnaround element. But once it makes that turn that wraps around the lift hill, you know you're in for something crazy. No matter where you sit, this final run of Airtime Hills is insane. The Magic Seat is the first car, third row, and I can attest that this seat gives some of the best, most insane airtime you'll find anywhere. It's almost too crazy to enjoy. In the back row, the airtime is still ejector, but it's not quite as violent, making it more enjoyable. It's the number one finale for me because you won't find airtime like this anywhere else. So those are the best finales that I've experienced on the coasters that I've ridden. Let me know what you think of the list and the best finales that you've ridden in the comments below. And I'll see you guys all next time.